If we attribute special qualities to a man or a woman from a past generation and raise them above their peers, our audience will likely be willing to consider the merits of our claims. But if we elevate a man or a woman of our own times, our claims would generally be met with skepticism or even outright disbelief if they are not supported by some recognized public authority. This is especially so within the realms of religion, where we often find men and women thanking God for what he has done while being unable to recognize what he's doing right now. When the God of the Bible has moved to meet challenges that arose for past generations, he has always worked through an inspired individual and never through a group. A group may form around such an individual, but there are no examples of a genuine move of God that began with a group. So if these are the methods that God used in former times, it gives us a strong indication how to recognize what he is doing in our day, because he declared through the prophet Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. And so we can expect him to continue to use the same methods. Every time there has been a significant move of God in the past, it has always challenged both the individuals and the religious organizations of the day, and forced them to decide whether or not they would accept the new thing that God was doing. And there are many examples of this in the Bible. For instance, if you had lived in the days of Moses, would you have recognized and believed that Moses was sent from God? Or would you have been amongst the many that murmured and turned against Moses and wanted to return to Egypt. If you had lived in the days of Noah, would you have entered into the ark because you believed Noah? Or would you have been found amongst those who were destroyed because they doubted his message that a global deluge was on its way? When John the Baptist appeared on the banks of the Jordan and proceeded to condemn the religious leaders of his day, would you have rejected him as a religious crank because he was a man of the wilderness who had no fellowship card from a large church organization? Or would you have been amongst the few who turned aside to follow Jesus when John declared, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Of course, it was not long before the prevailing religious organizations had also rejected Christ and united against him to condemn him to death. But despite this broad rejection, there was in fact a small minority who recognized the day of their visitation. One such individual was Simeon, who upon finding the child Jesus in the temple, took him up in his arms and prayed, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. We can also observe that although multitudes had followed Jesus when he healed their sick and fed them with loaves and fishes, by the time his days of ministry had come to an end, little more than 500 followers remained to witness his ascension, and only 120 tarried in Jerusalem to receive the baptism of the Spirit in the upper room as he had instructed. There are, of course, more recent examples where God has worked through individuals, and these include Martin Luther, who spearheaded the Reformation, John Wesley, who brought us the great truth of sanctification, and on down to modern times, when in 1906, the humble African-American, William J. Seymour, was used of God to initiate the Azusa Street Revival, the effects of which continue to this day. Each of these examples show that when God does a new thing, He does it through an individual and never through a group. We also can see that it is only a minority who recognize what God is doing while it passes the rest right by. As we mentioned before, He is the unchangeable God and will continue to use the same methods He established in the past. After the Azusa Street Revival had died down, God did not leave himself without a witness, and in 1933, he publicly commissioned a young, uneducated, 
but exceptionally gifted preacher from Kentucky while he was baptizing new converts in the Ohio River. The commission he was given was expressed with these words. As John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, your message will forerun his second coming. The message that William Branham delivered was not sent to draw attention to the speaker, but rather to prepare a people to meet Christ and deliver them from the coming judgment and threat of destruction that now weighs so heavily over the world. His preaching raised the faith of his audiences and triggered a worldwide healing revival that lasted for more than a decade. But although his ministry fulfilled the Bible's promises for this day to the very letter, what he taught was widely misunderstood. And so it has been with all the men that God has used in the past, and even the Lord was misunderstood by many who heard him speak, such as when he said of himself, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. His audience did not perceive what he meant, and with many becoming offended at this saying, they followed him no more. So while there are other examples that come to mind, it would be more helpful to now point you to the various materials we offer on this channel because they give an account of how God has moved in our day and provide you the opportunity to consider whether the things we bring to your attention are true, and if so, what significance they may have to you and your loved ones. When those who followed Jesus asked him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? He simply replied, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. So whatever you decide, please be sure to make your decision prayerfully and wisely. And may the Lord richly bless you.